<laughs> you know, I, I, I really believe that Mr. Vince McMahon of World Wrestling Entertainment uh, should get a hold of the Jesuit Order who writes the screenplay for the theatrics, for the theater that you are seeing given to you here recently. Unfortunately, in the theater that the Jesuit order operates on and in, unfortunately, it is a real life theater where real persons, spirit, soul, and body um, can get hurt and or even killed. It's an unfortunate tragedy. Um, but to the Jesuit and to all those who are associated with Rome, <laughs> um, it's to them it is a tragedy and comedy. It is theater. Um, obviously, some of you might have known that um, Donald Trump had an assassination attempt or something. Um, we're going to uh, look at some of this. Um, but like I said, as I understand it, someone did die. That is unfortunate. That is, that is grotesque. That is sad. But people, um, I'm going to start out here uh, with a um, little of my beloved William Shakespeare. I've read this thing, just this portion to you before, but it, it, it's so neat. It's so appropriate. Okay, I mean, you know, you of other nations have every right to mock us Americans. You really do. Us Americans with our theater, our drama. You know, uh, Shakespeare uh, was English, absolutely. But you know what, you uh, lovely English people, um, when it comes to theater drama today, um, you, you ain't going to beat this Jesuit America. You, you're not. You're not. This is from Macbeth, Act 5, Scene 5. I've read this to you before, but it, it's so appropriate. It's so meet with <laughs> what we discovered today. Ah, let's see. Sentence says to Macbeth, The queen, my lord, is dead. Macbeth. Should she have died hereafter? There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day. To the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fool. The way to dusty death, out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard of no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing <laughs> I, I, I haven't invested uh, that much time lately in um, Shakespeare I, 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 that's one of my uh, guilty pleasures uh, as it were um, Shakespeare I, I, I love Shakespeare I love Shakespeare um, uh, there are many uh, things about Shakespeare. Um, he um, he did in a lot of his plays was making veiled references against the Jesuit order. This is true. Um, it is also, I believe, also as well, I do believe that uh, William Shakespeare was a Freemason. Yes, I do believe that. I do. There. I mean, there's not really that much corroborating evidence to support that but you know he was like good buddies with Macon or Bacon or something like that um, who was a high-ranking Mason and whatnot and 
Uh, there, yeah, I, I do believe that Shakespeare was a Freemason. Yes, I do. I do. I do. I, I might have said previously that I, I didn't think so, but, you know, over time, you know, looking at and seeing the veiled references uh, in Shakespeare against the Jesuit order are astounding. I mean, they really, truly are. Um, they are, so. But anyway, anyway, um, apparently Trump, someone tried to assassinate Trump. Apparently. And I've also heard that Elon Musk <laughs> now supports Trump. And as I have been warning you, telling you, this, this is drama. This is theater. And in the scope that the Jesuit order runs in, their stage is the real world. But they give you a fictitious performance. And unfortunately, within this construct of the theater that the Jesuit order works on, people die. It's tragic. I mean, it truly is. It truly is. But apparently... Like I said, Trump, someone tried to assassinate Trump, apparently. Um, but before we get into any scripture, all right, I, I just, I, I just want to read, uh, refresh your memory about something in the book of Acts. Acts 17, verses 16 on to verse 21. We, we covered this recently, but I, uh, that, dude, dude. Vince McMahon couldn't write this stuff. Vince McMahon, you know, the guy from the WWE, um, he, he needs to get a hold of these Jesuits that are writing this um, theater for to make him, you know, more money, as if he needed any. <coughs> Acts 17, 16, under 21. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews, and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans, Epicureans, and of the Stoics encountered him and said, some said, What will this babbler say? Others some. He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto the Areopagus, saying, I have a pronunciation key now in this set of scripture, obviously, okay? Saying, may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but, to, but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Kind of like getting on the bandwagon there, you know, there, there dear Franklin. <laughs> I'll talk about that later. But um, new thing. New thing. John, 1 John 3. 1 John 3. Entertainment. Are you not entertained, huh? Are you not entertained? <laughs> oh, uh, where is it? Uh, no, it's... um. Where is that? Uh, where he says... Ah, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Verses 7 on to verse 8. 7 and 8. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. That's, of course, referencing that the Lord Jesus Christ would come die, bury, and raise again the third day according to the scripture, shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sin, okay, that kind of thing, okay. It was contained in the scriptures, 
which they should have known, but they did not know because they were not looking forward to the cross. Okay, don't believe these stupid, idiotic, antinomianist, pond scum guys. Don't believe them, okay? Again, a new commandment I write unto you. Which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. Hmm. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. <laughs> Are you not entertained? This is entertainment, man! <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, been, I've been telling y'all, uh, I, I, without a doubt, um, I may be very wrong. I truly believe that the Jesuit order is going to put Trump back into office. Look at what they've done. Look at the professional wrestling thing that they have done. Look at the dramatic theater that they have given to you people. There, you know, there has to be a payoff here somewhere. I do truly believe that the Jesuit order is going to put Trump back into office. And with what they're doing to Smoking Joe, a good, loyal servant of the Vatican, kind of, you know, you know, he's doing his job and they're uh, skirting him off into obscurity. Um, I used to think that uh, Kamala Harris was, you know, that they were going to try to put her in. They still might, you know, the Demokamis, uh, you know, they're, they're crazy. So are the Republicans! Okay? Uh, you know, some of you have accused me, you know, it's like, oh, you're a Demokami or... Whatever you're, I'm neither. Okay, I'm neither. All right. I hope that the, the, what you see, what you see given to you in the media, is a fictitious storyline, which is using actual living persons in an actual context. Okay, a historical fiction, you might say. Because they're using real lives, real persons, spiritual and body, real moments, but giving you a fictitious narrative. Please ask these one. <laughs> Verses 1 to verse 11. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It hath been already of old time, which was before us. And here's what a lot of the enemies of our Lord like to bank on. For there is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. See, the enemies of our Lord, like these antinomianist pond scum idiots, they, they expect you to have a short-term memory, to not remember things, except unless when they bring it up in order to fit their own little thing that they're doing. Hmm. Interesting. Now, let's, let's look at a few things here. New, uh, you know, wow, you know, with Trump. This is a PDF, if I can, uh, somewhere in the history, I, I, I want I wanna, I wanna you to see this. This is some terms from theater. This is a, what, a terminology, 
you, you can see this. I will find this and put drama terminology. And like I said, what we are seeing portrayed in media, on your televisions, on your laptops, on your tablets and the hell phones, what you are seeing isn't real. They are using real people, real elements, real events, but what they are giving you is a fictitious little story. Okay? Come on. So, I want to show you this. All right. <laughs> Climax. Now, you people get your head out of the gutter. The most dramatic point in a play. The most dramatic point in a play. Hmm. What we're seeing is theater. The most dramatic point. What was the climax? Hmm? Trump apparently got a bullet whizzed by his ear and he and you see him there are pictures of him doing ah, this all right uh, minor character character no 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 uh, okay drama process the steps taken from responding to stimulus or text to the performance day hmm okay and let's dramatic features these are key areas in the production, such as plot, plot twist. Ooh. Think about it. Okay, they, they, they with Trump, they, they put this guy through the ringer. Okay? They put him through the ringer. He's a felon, but he got amnesty or something like that. Okay, he's been charged with this, and he's keeping going. And the character that he is being portrayed as is this unstoppable force okay like in wrestling it was a term that gorilla monsoon uh, would mention the irresistible force meaning the immovable object trump the irresistible force the immovable object what's the immovable object well, it's being portrayed as the demokamis <laughs> it's being portrayed as the system in a way that america is under and believe me friends it's only going to get worse when they put Trump back in. Like I said, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm neither. I, I agree with that devil George Carlin. When it comes to this kind of stuff, you got to step back and relax and enjoy the show because you need to see, you need to look at what you are being given for what it really is. Drama. Theater. I've been telling you this for a long time. This is why you cannot believe what you see. Even though they use real life elements, real person, spirit, soul, and body. It's, a, it's an act. Dramatic, dramatic features. These are key areas in production such as plot and plot twists, themes and issues, dramatic tension, dramatic irony, character motivation, character relationships, ships, key moments, genre, Form, purpose, setting, period, style, target, audience, mood, and atmosphere. Everything that's being done with this whole thing with Trump. Dramatic features and, all right, dramatic tensions, tension, points of tension, moments of tension, tense and exciting moments in the play. <laughs> And dramatic irony, actions or remarks whose significance is not realized by all the characters. Hmm. Like I said, this 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 is a little fascinating thing that I found. But uh, dramatic, ten this is drama. This is theater, people. This is all theater. Okay, this is, you're being set up. There are no elections in America. There are only selections. And I truly believe that the Jesuit order is, in fact, going to put Donald J. Trump back into office. And uh, I hope I'm wrong. I do. But if they do put Trump back into office, like I believe they're going to, they're setting the stage. Look at it. And what a feel-good story. What a story of the little guy. He's, and think about, think about how inspiring. 
Oh, he's 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 selling the authorized version. He's persecuted. Okay, he he he's for us little guys, and they, <laughs> the evil Democrats and the Democrats are evil. So are the Republicans. Okay, so are the Republicans. But what a feel-good story. And then when he's put back in office, as I believe, the climax. And then I believe. Now, now, here, 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 we got, we, 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 we have to, okay? All right, okay, this is browser two. All right. <laughs> I have not watched this. I have not watched this. And also, too, I want to bring this up because um, these weird Pentecostal Christians, for example, uh, the, the, a while ago, Trump did this thing with the treaty, and the charismatic Pentecostals tried to do so, try to tie it in with the peace treaty, something like that, with Trump and whatnot. When the and and, and these are the same guys who say that Trump had the Cyrus anointing. <laughs> it's just the level that Christianity will go to try to validate itself is. <laughs> full of wonder. And I would not be surprised if there are Christians out there who are going to try to tie what happened in here with, with and we're going to read this, with what the events in Revelation chapter 13. I, you know, brother and sister, I, I, I would not, come on, look at what they did with this guy with the Cyrus anointing. And now I, I, I forget even what it was about, about how he did some kind of um, peace treaty thing a while ago while he was in office at first, and they all tried to tie it into the thing in Daniel. And even his holiness from Maine was like, dude, 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 this has nothing to do with that. The same thing, okay? But, but before we get ahead of myself here, okay? <laughs> Check this out. I haven't watched this, so let's go. Old that chart. That chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. How come no one behind him got shot with a bullet? I, I mean, I, I, maybe they did. I don't know. As I understand it, somebody died at least. Um, I'm Sorry, I hope that individual will save, go to heaven, I hope. But, uh, you know, you, you see that he did that because he, he apparently got whatever. Let's continue. Okay, somebody in the back maybe... Now see, he was standing there and he did this with his ear because as I, as I heard, a bullet whizzed his ear or something like that. But, okay, look at behind him. If someone got hit with the shrapnel, how come the people aren't looking uh, so someone behind him didn't get shot? Hmm, that's weird. Anyway. Drama, dramatic tension, climax, and the payoff, the plot twist, the hand in the air. 
I, I feel uh, whoever someone died, I'm sorry for that. Um, I'm sorry that whomever, who, who uh, and many whatever, I'm sorry for that. But this. This is, this is theater, people. This is a drama based off a of fictitious narrative using historical actual elements. <laughs> Professional wrestling calls that a cheap pop. Where they, they do something in the wrestling ring, and, or they say something, and it gets a reaction from the crowd. Trump, he held his ear, he got whizzed by a bullet or something, they tackle him, someone died, unfortunately, and then he comes up, yeah! Now stop. What is your flesh feeling when you see that dramatic thing unfolding? See, it's presented in a way to spark emotion in the flesh with the drama with the drama. And this is real life. Okay? This is real life. But the narrative is fictitious. It's a storyline. Don't, and I'm sure once they, it, the, this is going to be the big news thing, I'm sure. But I'm sure like they do with the, like they did with the assassination of Kennedy, and like they like to do the lone nut gunman thing. You watch. You watch. They're going to probably pull that old, pull that old card out. It was a lone nut gunman. A lone gunman. Acting on himself. In America, which is run by the Jesuit order. America, which is a Christian nation. Nothing happens here without Sosa knowing about it. Without the Jesuit order doing something about it. Or being, you know, the author thereof in some context. When it comes to this kind of stuff. Okay? The Jesuit order controls America. The Jesuit order runs America. Okay? All right? And it's that way for judgment against this disgusting Christian nation. Hey, I'm glad I'm here and not someplace else. I am. And I, I you know, for those of you servicemen who fought in the wars of the Vatican, I'm sorry. I, I really am. I really am. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay? I mean, I, I, I thank you. Thank you. But those of you, especially you saints who were once in the military, you know the truth. You know the truth. Anyway, that, you, you got the gist. You got the gist. Okay. But, okay, now, here's, and here's really the point why we were doing this. These, these, woo, what? job Pentecostal Christians you know the guys who you know like prophecy Trump prophecy this guy they're usually Pentecostals nine times out of ten they're Pentecostals okay all right they're, they're, they're crazy nuts okay these are the same guys who believe that people go to hell come back and write a book about it or go to heaven and come back and make a movie about it or whatever okay these are the same people okay I, I forget the logistics about what it was a couple years ago with Trump and some people. I, I, I mentioned that now, what, four times? I, I can't remember what I forget. But now, okay, number one, Cry, uh, uh, Trump 
is not that man of sin to some perdition. Okay? He's, he's not. Okay? Trump is not that man of sin to some perdition. That man of sin, you can read of this in Daniel, there will be links in the description box for you. That man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Hey, <laughs> find that for me in scripture. Okay. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Hebrew. Okay. In order to have the events unfold in the time of Jacob's trouble, Satan is going to have to become what he hates the most. And Satan hates the Hebraic Jewish people, I think, even more so than the body of Christ. I really do. That man of sin, number one, is going to be a Hebrew. Okay. Number two, number two, the body of Christ is still on the earth. Okay? Revel uh, Revelation, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, all right? Verses, okay, uh, verses 6 on to verse 8, all right? There are these heretics out there who say that they're Paul's tribulation because they read uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. But they don't like to continue up to verses 6 on the verse 8. Okay? Number one, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Hebraic Jew. Okay? He's not going to be a Caucasian American. He's not Trump. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is not macaroni guy like that idiot Jeffrey Grider tells you. I'm sure he's still saying that today. Okay? It's not Barack Obama. Okay? It's not Oprah Winbag either. Okay? All right. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a man, and he's going to be a Hebraic Jew. Okay? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. Let means to hinder. Until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. Okay? All right? Uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. The falling away is not saved, brethren, who get messed up, Mr. Fig. You're a lying devil, and you're trying to cover your own backside. The Lord rebuke you. All right? The falling away is people like you. What does that mean? Well, you go to 1 John chapter 2, <laughs> verse 19. Okay? They were not from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would now, no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That's the falling away. You look up falling away, fall away in Scripture. Okay? People who were never saved who ingratiated, tried to ingratiate themselves onto the body of Christ to put off the facade like the antinomianist pod scum idiots that they're actually saved and they're not. Okay? They are revealed. They are made manifest that they're not of us. That's the falling away. Okay? Uh, Say brethren get messed up all the time. That's not the falling away. Okay? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, which is happening and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so he, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Temple! The third rebuilt Hebraic Jewish temple. Uh, that, that ain't around yet, is it? No. No, the Muslims' uh, Dome on the Rock is right there where they're going to build it, I think. Okay, or whatever. And, you know, I've asked this of several sons of Ishmael. Several. What would happen if the Dome of the Rock got kablooey and then they start to build a third Jewish temple uh, on that? At every single uh, son of Ishmael... No, 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 no. There were a couple, uh, a few, who didn't outrightly say that. But they all agreed that, number one, the Islamic Muslim world would go berserk and bonkers over that. And number two, a jihad would most likely be instituted. Okay? 
Their temple isn't around yet. And they'll believe these dudes who said, you know, that they could, you know, dude, we get called up, they could have that temple up in no time flat. They got the red heifer and stuff like that. They have all the stuff. The only thing that needs to happen is for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That means that's the redemption of the purchased possession. That man of sin, the son of... Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, that man of sin, the son of perdition. The body of Christ needs to be redeemed, taken out of the way. Then that man of sin, the son of perdition, gets revealed. It's right here. You guys who say, oh, I'm in post uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. You're not reading the whole context. You're not. Conveniently. Conveniently. That, that's the common thing with the enemies of our Lord. Uh, when someone gives the scripture refuting their, stupid, their stupidity and their wicked heresy, all they do is use philosophy and vain deceit. Like uh, my dear sweet sunken eyed Canadian, did, can't even refute through scripture. All you've got to do is philosophy and vain deceit. <laughs> or, or little snippets of scripture, nothing deep, because it's scripturally in inept. <laughs> anyway, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, reference unto his second coming. Okay? You, know, you never know with these Christians. Uh, Donald Trump is not that man in the son of perdition. Okay? Now, I, I have this nagging suspicion. Revelation chapter 13. Okay? You never know with the, these Pentecostal Christians. You, you never know what kind of crazy nonsense they're going to come up with. Revelation 13. Now, unlike some people who are looking to justify a man's doctrine, uh, the book of Revelation is chronological. Okay? Someone tells you otherwise, they're trying to justify something that a man taught, not through the scripture. Okay? You believe that the book of Revelation isn't chronological? Well, you're wrong. You're very wrong. Why? You're seeking to justify the teaching of a man. Okay? You are. You are. But, here's the problem. In Revelation chapter 4, we see is very significant. Why? Revelation 4, 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter that's the redemption of the purchased possession that's when we the body of Christ get caught up and all you antinomianist free grace uh, idiots you're going to be left behind just believe and receive and damning people to hell <laughs> yeah good luck okay that hasn't happened yet and then um, Revelation 6 1 and 2 and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. A bow with no arrows, because he was using other people to do his battles. Okay? Going forth, conquering, and to conquer. That's that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, the body of Christ needs to be removed first. We're still here. Trump is not that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, like I said, brethren, you never know with these crazy Christians what kind of nonsense they're going to come up with about how to justify themselves or something like that. Revelation 13. Verses 1 on verse 3. Oh, verses 1 on verse 4. Now, this is during the time of Jacob's trouble. Doctrinally, it has nothing to do with us. The body of Christ is still on the earth. That man of sin, that, that man of sin, the son of perdition, has not been revealed. We need to be out of here before that happens. And it's not going to be Manuel Macaroni 
It's not Trump. It's not Obama. Okay. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's not Oprah. Okay. All right. All right. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, Satan, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Tie that in with Luke chapter 4, about all this will I give thee, if you will fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. Okay? And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. All the world wondered after the beast. Deadly wound. He got nicked in the ear. Okay? You brethren, you never know what these Pentecostal crazy charismatics you never know what they're going to pull. Okay? At least, like with the idiot free gracers, at least they're more predictable. The, 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 <laughs> the Pentecostal charismatics, woohoo! They're dirty. They're, they're, you never know what you're going to get with them. You really don't. Okay? So, <laughs> I, would, I would not be surprised if somewhere out of all this, you hear Christian coming to this. To say, hey, look, Trump's the medicine, the son of perdition. I would not be surprised. I would not. I would be surprised if no one did anything about that. I would. Brad, you are. Well, yeah, I'm warning you in case one of these these crazy Pentecostal charismatic nut jobs, you know, I've been to heaven and I'm here to write a book and make a movie about it. Or I've been to hell and. Uh, I'm here to write a book about it. Or I seen Jesus. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Verse four. But there's a principle here. There's a principle here that I don't want you to miss. Now, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the body of Christ is not going to be on the earth. It's not by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't believe these disgusting, uh, dung-filled, <laughs> free grace idiots. Okay? They're going to be left behind, and they're going to try to deceive you to just believe and receive, so you can take the mark in your right hand, and I'll end you for forehead, and damn you to hell. Okay? That's why they're doing it. Okay? Don't believe these guys. These guys are liars. They're scripturally enough. All they can do is twist scripture. They're, they're useless. Okay? Don't believe them. Don't. For your own sake. Alright? But, there's a principle here. A theatric. The man, this man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, got a wound, a deadly wound that was miraculously healed. Okay? And everybody, everybody's going to see this. Okay? Okay, and everybody's going to worship the beast. Okay? Everybody's going to see it hot through internet, through their cell phones or whatever. It's going to be a public event. You know, just like how the false prophet can call down fire in front of people, just like Elijah did, for theatric, for visual stimuli, for theater, for entertainment, man. That, that's the principle. And they worship the dragon, verse 4, Satan, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now, for our instruction in righteousness today, that, that this is for the time of Jacob's trouble. Doctrinally, no. It has nothing to do with us today. Doctrinally, not at all. To instruct us in a little righteousness, what do you see? You see a guy who's being put through the ringer and is just coming out smelling like a rose and now he holds his ear. Someone tried to kill him. Wasn't a deadly wound. But the principle... Who's going to be able to stop Trump? It's the professional wrestling angle, the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. Sorry to bring this up. How many of you remember WrestleMania 3? 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, leave it that way. WrestleMania 3, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. At that time, at the uh, Pontiac Silverdome, which has been demolished, okay, which uh, supposedly had the indoor attendance record or some nonsense like that. But at that time, it was, you know, Gorilla Monsoon, you know. The irresistible force, Hulk Hogan, meeting the immovable object, and all this build-up, all this dramatic tension, plot twists, build-up to the ultimate what? Hulk Hogan slamming Andre the Giant and maintaining his WWF, it was at WWF at that time, championship reign. The former heavyweight champion of the world, Donald Trump. A usurper came in with guile. Kind of like when... I'm using wrestling jargon because people! It's professional wrestling! What you are seeing! I, I've been telling you this. I've been warning you. Dude, okay? It's professional wrestling. The, the Ultimate Warrior, when Rick Rude, you know, when Ultimate Warrior, Rick Rude, pinned him... Bobby Bray Heaton held onto his foot and pinned the Ultimate Warrior. That's the the mindset there that's being given to you through the media with Smoking Joe. Okay? This is drama. This is theater. And now, now the doctrinally, like I said, I can't see that. Doctrinally, okay, Revelation chapter th has nothing to do with us today. The body of Christ is still on the earth. That man of sin, the son of perdition, has not been revealed. That will only happen until after we are gone. Then that happens, okay? But the principle here, a dramatic scene. The hand in the air for victory. He held his thing. Who's going to stop Trump? Who's going to stop him? Who's going to stop him? Oh, and just imagine the the emotion and the drama about, you know, how he's in. See, he is ingratiating himself to us who can barely make it, who us who can't, can't afford to pay our bills, who those of us who depend on everything from the Lord, from what goes into our mouth, what we put upon our body and stuff like that. Okay, he's trying to ingratiate himself onto the lower class. Not just the middle class, the lower class, because and he's selling the authorized version. Okay, and look at all the obstacles he has had to overcome, and he has, he has. Friends, don't waste your time this year. Now, hey, I you know what? I'll be. I hope I'm wrong. I do. I do. I hope I'm wrong. I believe, like I said, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. Okay, I'm not. I'm neither. Like I said, I agree with Carlin. Sit back and watch, watch the drama unfold. I agree with that. Saint, that's what you got to do too. Okay? I believe they're going to put that man back in office. I do. I hope I'm wrong. I do. Either way, it's not going to be good for America. The worst for the nation is who the Jesuit order is going to put into office. At the time, it was worse for America for them to put the figurehead Smokey Joe in there for us. And because look what happened, too. Okay? And with all this stuff that's going on with Russia and Ukraine, which you're not hearing about too much anymore, okay, which is not Gog and Magog. That, 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 you know, don't got to worry about that for quite a while, okay? Okay? <laughs> the, the thing about Gog and Magog, that happens after Satan is let loose, okay? Got a long time until that becomes scripturally viable, okay? Quite a while yet, okay? So chill. But um, they, they put Trump back into office. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Anyway, just wanted, wanted to get that out, this little little video out for you people to kind of chew on. <laughs> like, uh, Brother Alexander texts me. He's like, oh, 
The tramp got shot, huh? <laughs> yeah. This is like, okay, got to do a video. So anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching. If you do, thank you, brethren, for your prayers. And please pray for one another. We love you. And we will see you, Lord willing, tomorrow. Got a, got a good video, Lord willing, tomorrow. Got to put it together. So, not going to be the music video yet, brother. Uh, not yet. Lord willing, that will come. Pray for me, okay? But uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about love, Lord willing, tomorrow. It's up to him. Cheerio! See you later!